Hello everybody. Recently, Sabor Ahmed and the Muslim Lantern produced a video where they laughably claimed that they scientifically and rationally dismantled evolution. There was so much nonsense in this video that I had to do four separate videos in response. They then did a live stream inviting people to call in and debate them on evolution. I did so, and this is an analysis of my participation. Okay, yeah. let's bring now <laughs> maybe a problematic guest, yeah? So someone that maybe you're already familiar with. Okay, mm. let's bring on. Okay, mm -hmm. now, Hassan, let Hi. me ask you, how are you? You good? Yes, good, thank thanks. You nice for, to talk to you. I've not spoken to you before. Yeah, I think so. I have not spoken to you before as well. Uh, okay, let me ask you just a few questions. The first thing is, uh, are you a naturalist? Methodological naturalist, yes. Okay. The second thing is, method, uh, so do you believe that everything scientific has to be explained through natural processes? Uh, well, everything scientific, yes. Can only, um, can I, only be explained through natural yeah, processes. Yeah, un until you can test for the supernatural, you can't include the supernatural in any scientific um, explanation. Okay, so, so you are a that, that's what distinguishes me from a philosophical naturalist. So I'm not I, I'm not saying they, that the supernatural doesn't exist. I'm saying that um, in terms of science, you can only work with methodological naturalism because you need to be able uh, to have testable theories. And uh, and then if you can't do that, um, you know, and, and if you can't test uh, reliably for the supernatural, then you can't have that in methodological naturalism. No, that doesn't that doesn't follow. Why do you reject the idea of a supernatural thing influencing something natural ha happening. Science is a rigorous methodological investigation of reality. Science doesn't investigate the supernatural, not because of some implied bias, but simply because the supernatural is nowhere to be found. Conveniently, God is hiding in this case because he decided to make a test. If we lived in a Harry Potter world where the supernatural manifests often and amazing things happen all the time, you better be sure scientists would have investigated those phenomena. Science is just the best tool we humans have to investigate reality. It can investigate anything in reality as long as you set the objective and accurate empirical data. If something doesn't manifest in reality, it's indistinguishable from non-existing. Then we have immaterial things like feelings and concepts that although they exist in reality, in a loose kind of sense, science doesn't directly deal with them because of their subjective, elusive and often personal nature. But A. Those are not supernatural, they are transcendent or immaterial. B. Religion makes a hard claim of reality. God is not merely a concept or a feeling. He exists in cosmology and manifests in reality through revelations. So, that is a lame excuse from Thais to rationalize away their lack of evidence and scientific accuracy. The other tool we have to investigate reality is reason. But reason alone, without empirical evidence, is inefficient to investigate reality unless we are talking about things like we exist and fundamental laws of logic. Theists often like to understate the truth-bearing ability of science when science doesn't meet their preferred conclusions about reality. But this type of mindset comes only to serve human psychology, not truth. Okay, I just explained it. I said because you can't test for it, so it's not within methodological naturalism, and that's what distinguishes me from a philosophical No, naturalist. but why, test, test using what? Using the scientific method. So do you know a way of testing for the supernatural? So, so uh, you are just going in a circular reason. No, okay. I'm not, are you I'm trying not, to say asked, it's not? What's happened is you've asked me a question. I've answered it. You didn't quite understand it, so you've asked me the same question again. So I've answered it. So I, I need to ask you something to see. No, what I, you understand. Understand. I, I okay. understand. I right, understand. Anyway, just your, answer your, this. Your, answer this uh, then. By the Can way, I, I don't appreciate interruptions. I don't appreciate interruptions. 
I'll let you know from the beginning of the discussion. Um, I let guests speak. Maybe you've been waiting and you've been listening. We don't have any issues with anyone, right? So if there's an issue, it'll probably be coming from you, yeah? Because we've been talking with other people and we've been calmly engaging in discussions, sure, sure. right? I'm trying to be calm, but uh, I'm just answering I, your questions. Yes, yes. I, I do understand what you said. Problem is I'm disagreeing with you. Where did you get this criteria from that it has to be testable in order for me to accept that it can influence the naturalistic reality? Okay, okay. so let me try to clear up this misconception that scientists assume that science only deals with methodological naturalism. Science is a rigorous investigation of reality. For something to exist in reality, it must have some kind of essence, no matter how exotic is this essence. Otherwise, it's just an immaterial concept. Science cannot investigate the imaginary pink dragon you have in your head unless you assign the objective and the data of your imaginary dragon. Science is just a tool, a calculator. Science is just a calculator. So it doesn't get biases for uh, supernatural or natural. It's a fact of reality that whatever exists must have some kind of essence. If God is just a concept in, in our mind, he doesn't really exist. Isn't that right? So it's not about science having biases for methodological naturalism. It's about, by definition, concepts do not exist outside our minds. If the supernatural was affecting reality in any way or form, we would have been able to detect it, because now it translates to natural reality. What you, you like us to do is insert in our explanations of reality, ad hoc, something called the supernatural, just because it fits your personal convictions and feelings. And we are not willing to do that. Then, instead of realizing your bias in favor of something called the supernatural because of your religious convictions, you accuse the other side of doing something bias. Okay, that is what, what is happening here. You know, there may be a reality out there which is the cause of everything, or it's, it's, it's active in the world, but it's not detectable by science. So yeah. that's what he—that's what I understood he's saying, and I don't think you disagree with that. No, 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 I don't disagree. I, I don't disagree with that. You, you've summed it up really well. So, yes, yes. So that, that's what, that's all he was saying. Yeah. That's... Yes, but that is an empty claim that implies a bad epistemology. It's an appeal to ignorance. Let me give you an example of this kind of argument. You are making a claim that Allah exists in the dark side of the moon. Let's say. And then you say, eh, how you know Allah doesn't exist? He's in the dark side of the moon. Did you took a rocket to go to the dark side of the moon and disprove me? That is upside, logic upside down. Okay, so just because we haven't went to the dark side of the moon to disprove you, that doesn't mean Allah became probable. Okay, you are addressing absolutes and not effective reasoning. You are addressing, ah, you cannot absolutely disprove me, therefore what? Allah became probable. No, that's a fallacy. What I'm saying is... Uh, I, so I'm you both saying, agree with each other. No. Okay, Can I'm we please have that, a disagreement? Because this sorry. is why you are disagreeing. <laughs> I'm not saying that... I want to see you guys disagree. Sorry, I'm yeah. not saying there's no supernatural. I'm just saying that until you can reliably test for it. Okay, but one of the first thing I wanted to say was um, on my channel, Isan 1C, oh, so, so, I sorry, watched... Sorry. No. I must admit, I did use this opportunity to plug my channel. The two of them then berated me for doing so on their live stream. How, how, many, how many subscribers do you have? Can I just ask you? 33. 33. Okay. How many subscribers are on this channel? I have no idea. Thousands, probably. Uh, 101,000. So no, 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 Esan, you, wait one second. You came onto this stream. We were having a conversation with you. We were perfectly happy to speak with you. Out of nowhere, you just started plugging your channel. No. In fact, what actually happened is out of nowhere, you started 
having a negative attitude against his son, although he is perfectly within decent intellectual conduct. Parrying your lack of moral character and intellectual decency. Okay, that is what actually happened. Because right? I'm doing reaction videos to no, no, your discussions. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. One, one, one sec. I, I, no, we were talking about something else. We were talking about the supernatural and naturalism. Everything went well. Then you came in and you started plugging your channel. You did the same thing in multiple streams. Okay, well, okay just uh, okay. So let me ask you. Let me ask you just. Uh, yeah, yeah. First, I said to you in the beginning when you joined that I have a few questions for you. Right. So first, you need to allow me to ask you those few questions. Which are basic questions like, do you believe in naturalism? It's a very basic yes or no, no questions. So we can move forward from that, right? And he answered it very efficiently, and you insisted. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. Let me say that once again. God damn it. So we don't want to be talking about your channel, someone else's channel. In fact, let me ask you this. What good reason do I have personally to look at a reaction video of a channel that has 33 subscribers? Give me one good reason. They then started points scoring as if my opinion was irrelevant because I have far fewer subscribers. I try to explain that the number of subscribers doesn't matter as I have made reaction videos to their videos and that is what they should be discussing. To highlight how ridiculous this argument is, at the time of this podcast I had 33 subscribers. I make science videos which don't tend to attract a mass audience. Justin Bieber on the other hand is a singer and he has 71.2 million subscribers. So by their logic, Whatever Justin Bieber has to say about evolution or any other topic is of more value than anything I have to say. Okay, well, the number of subscribers isn't really relevant, but if you look okay. at the actual arguments... Give me a good reason. I'm giving you one now. I'm giving you one now. For a start... No, no, to con no, no wait, wait. The, the reason cannot be within the videos because I need to con a reason to consider looking at it first. In I other words, uh, the Muslim London just said, I don't care about truth, I care, ab I care about popularity. Simple. This is what you just said. I don't care about truth. I care about who is popular. I care about subscribers. This is what you said with black and white words. As for Ixan, Ixan, you should have gave a more efficient example. Just say Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa has one million subscribers. Yet his content, not even his mother, should have, should have subscribed. Not even his mother. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? First of all, you idiot. Sorry, sorry. I shouldn't uh, insult people. Sorry about that. I apologize. First of all, my friend, uh, I've seen Muslim channels without content and with 1,000 subscribers. Guys, I took a picture of that. It was years ago. It was a channel with no content, nothing, not a single video. And because it had a clever name, uh, The Muslim Scholar, it had 1,000 subscribers. Are you kidding us? You know how hard it is to have subscribers when you make the kind of videos Iksan made? And his channel is one month old. The YouTube algorithm doesn't show his channel to people. I know his channel because he's my friend. I'm not asking for a reason for what the content that it has. I'm asking for a reason for me to consider even looking at it. I don't know if you think I have free time or what, but if I did have free time, 30 minutes of my day, what convincing reason would lead me to look at your channel? Hmm. Nice question. Let me think. <laughs> Maybe because he made you the honor to spend probably more than 10 hours studying and making videos, watched carefully a three-hour stream you made. Can you comprehend that this guy took the time, three hours, to watch your stream? Three-hour stream, and then take the time to study and respond. And then joined your live stream willing to present his argument again. He never said, why did you do not see my video? 
He said, let me present the arguments of my videos for you to respond. He didn't sue you because you didn't watch his video. You are making an unnecessary personal attack against a perfectly decent person whose only crime is he took your, your video seriously and responded. Now, to conclude, science is just a tool. It hasn't got biases. The question whether God made the universe is a cosmological question. If there were, in fact, evidence for intelligent design, science would have concluded God existed, exists. The same way we are investigating if alien intelligent species exist. There are type of evidence that would have convinced scientists that God most probably exists. I can give many examples of such evidence. And yet this type of evidence are exactly the evidence we don't find. The intelligent design arguments are either abstract philosophical, either God of the gaps arguments. They are kind of negative arguments. You are free to believe whatever you like, but Islam doesn't make claims of belief. It makes claims of fact. It wants to dictate politics in a totalitarian way, okay. and it wants to enter into classrooms. Those are not faith-based claims, okay. but in order to make claims, political claims, and to enter classrooms, you need to have some kind of demonstrable evidence. Okay. We cannot teach children as fact uh, the uh, agnostos X, in other words, the unknown X, teach it like a fact. How that can happen? When Allah decided to play hide and seek, he cannot then demand a totalitarian dictatorship and to enter classrooms as a fact. Okay, so that is the end of the first response. I will respond to the whole video of the engagement of Ihsan with a Muslim apologist. Thank you very much.